Hey everybody, so today's video is one that I am particularly excited about. I've been doing some uh, research on it and talking with colleagues and the the feedback that I've been getting has been incredible. In fact, it's actually been very surprising. Uh, as you can see by the thumbnail, this is a bit of a dilemma, kind of. I'm adding a little bit more drama to it, but this idea of what's best to use is really it, to a certain extent, it is a matter of opinion, but at the same time, there is a lot of practicality to it. Just know that you're going to be surprised when you find out which of these two came out to be a pretty heavy favorite among music teachers. I was actually surprised at how strong people felt about their opinions and their choice and why. So it's really, really cool, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this video because I know I did. So. Here we go. So let's get into it. The pros and cons of the discs and the straps. I say no, no, no. Now before we do get into those two, I want to talk about a third option that really is not an option, and that is to go with neither the disc nor the strap. How about no? For a long time, if you were to go into a rehearsal room and you were sitting where the cellos usually sit, you would see right where the tiles meet, little divots, and sometimes the cellos would stick that end pin right down into there. And it's just not good for the floors, it's not very reliable, and can't be sure that it will be there, that something will be there. Plus, you never know where you're gonna sit, if you're gonna change seats, or if you're even gonna change positions in the orchestra. Sometimes some orchestras have the cellos on one side, sometimes they have them on the other. So it's just way too much of a risk to take uh, when you can just easily have one of these other two items. So neither, not an option. Wonder, 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 so first off, the cello end pin, if you look at the cello, at the very bottom you're going to see a little bolt. And if you loosen that bolt, out will slide a long metal stick, basically. And it's just a long piece of metal that at the end usually has a tip. And that's what the weight of the cello sits on when it's being played. And this is partly why the cellists are pretty much the only instrument in the orchestra that cannot be played standing up. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. One, one thousand. We're going to break each option into five categories and compare them. And so this video is going to first look at the discs, then the straps, and then we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So if you look in the video description, you'll see the timeline where you can see where each section starts and you can bounce around as much as you like. First, the disc. To put it bluntly, the disc is a hockey puck. That's basically what it is. It's a hockey puck with a little divot carved out of it. It's about maybe half the width of an actual hockey puck, but it's actually about the same size as far as diameter. Discs can come in a variety of shapes, about maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch thick, and the bottom has some kind of treatment that will prevent it from slipping. The top, or the divot, can be a raised little hole or um, just something cut out. But the idea is that whatever it is, it's not going to move around and the pin will just s s slip in and you're good to go. When it comes to stability, that kind of depends on the surface that you're working with. If it's a slippery floor, then you're going to want something with a rubber bottom. If it's a carpet, you're going to want something that grips a little bit more. But you have to remember, it's a free-floating piece of disc, let's say, a piece of rubber or a piece of whatever it is. So if the end pin is directly down into it at almost a perpendicular 90-degree angle and all the weight is just sitting down straight into it, you're pretty much stable. But just like with anything else, if you lean back a little bit and suddenly now that pressure to the side is more than that rate of friction between the disc and the floor can handle, 
that disc will slide right out. It doesn't happen too often, but it can, again, depending on the surface. If you're playing on a carpet, if you're playing on a floor, if the bottom of your disc has a rubber treatment, has some kind of tread, if it's flat, it all depends on that. So stability, generally okay. This is a great piece of equipment because it's not connected to anything else. So if you need to move it, you just lift up a little bit or even just not push down on the cello, but lift up that weight. You can scooch it with your foot and you're set. In general, it, nothing prevents it from adjusting immediately and securely to whatever you need it to do. Portability, you just pick it up and go. Gone. That's it. Done. Now the variations typically come in the shape of it, not necessarily the size, but sometimes the color. And with the color, that's the one you have to think most about as far as how personal you're going to make it. It's great that you can kind of take things and make it your own, and this in general is not going to be that big of a deal. If you are going from surface to surface and changing surfaces, maybe what you have works for one surface but not particularly well for another, so you may have to get more than one. So there is that inconvenience of uncertainty, but in general, you're pretty much going to be okay. And if it really is that much of a concern and you know that you're always going to be either in one place or the other, maybe you can get just two discs, one for that place and that place, and then you'll be fine. Now the strap is a strap. It has a some type of loop at, at one end, and that's where you put the foot of your chair, then a stretch of some type of material, and we'll get into those variations here in a bit. It's going to be static either way, even if it's just a strip of nylon. It will be adjustable, but it won't be flexible. And then at the end, you'll have some type of maybe little piece of wood or piece of steel or whatever it is that has that end pin hole in it. And that's where you stick the end pin and you're set. This is by far the most stable of the two. Because the chair sits in that loop on the end of it, it's just not going anywhere because you've got the weight not only of the chair, but of the person sitting on that. So it is by far the most stable. Flexibility and adjustability, nah, not particularly. Again, it's a static piece and it's stuck under that chair. So if you need to adjust it, you can make slight adjustments to yourself, but it's not like with the disc where you can just scooch it. You have to move back and forth if you want to adjust because again, that is stable under that chair. If you want to move it more than whatever it is you can move in your chair, then you have to put the cello down. You may or may not have to lift up the chair to remove the strap, but you are gonna have to then go down and move that buckle in order to lengthen or shorten the strap itself. Portability. Not too much of a problem when the strap itself is not made out of a hard material. And we'll talk about that when it comes to variations. But in general, again, lift up the chair, pick it up, wrap it up, toss in your case, you're good. When it comes to variations, you have three major types. First is the single strap, which is just the loop, one strap, and the hole. And it usually is placed under the front left foot of the chair. The second option is the double strap, which is one loop under each of the front legs of the chair, a strap coming from each to a connecting point that goes and has that last end pin hole at the end where the end pin goes. The third and the ones you don't really see too often, except in some school settings where, we, where you know that the strap itself is not going anywhere because the kids don't take it with them. And that's when there's just a piece of wood or some type of hard material that goes from the leg to the end pin. And again, you usually only see that when there's a lot of people coming in and out, a lot of young students, 
and they're maybe only going to play in that room and you just not sure where everybody's going to need it. So that variation will have at the end a number of different holes, maybe even throughout that material, but it's one stiff material. So again, maybe a piece of plywood or something that is not particularly uh, able to or really meant to be taken out of the room. The other variation can come in the end pin material itself. So sometimes it'll be just a single hole. Sometimes it'll be a little device and it has multiple holes. So again, you can make that adjustment as you feel needed. <laughs> The biggest inconvenience is that it's it's a strap so there's extra material and sometimes that may interfere where the cellist's foot is going to sit. While they're playing they may have to move their foot a little bit so they're not uh, so they're not stepping on it. The downside is if they maybe forget about it and they slide their foot back well maybe they'll kick it and if that strap gets pulled that cello is going to get pulled back too so it may be a whole mess of what all is happening and you just don't really want that. All right, now here we go. Side-by-side -side comparison, disc versus strap for all the marbles. Who's gonna take the title of best end pin stabilizer cello piece of equipment ever? Let's get it on! First, stability. It has to go to strap, no question. It's there, it's not going anywhere. Once you put that one or two loops under that leg of the chair, it's it, it's not going anywhere. So stability definitely goes to strap. Flexibility and adjustability, without question, has to go to disc. All you have to do is scooch it, you're good. Portability, dead even tie. You pick up the disc and you put it in your case and you're gone. With the strap, you pick up the chair, pick up the strap, roll it up, and you're gone. There's really no way to say one is easier than the other. Dead tie. Inconvenience, this is one of those where, do we say one is more inconvenient than the other? Nah, so you know what? I'm just gonna toss that category all together. And your winner by a vote of 89 to 31 when serving music teachers across the United States, the Strap! That's right. I was really surprised. Out of 120 people that I talked to, there were that many. 89 people said Strap. So about 75%. And I was thinking maybe 50, 50, maybe 60, 40. But now people were pretty much saying, yeah, let's go for the strap. And that really came from the stability. Discs can go from a couple bucks to 15, 20 dollars. Same thing with straps. They can be elaborate, they can be simple. So my suggestion is, since you're gonna have to have a stop somewhere at some point, might as well just get one of each and see how it goes. No matter what, it all depends on what is most comfortable and what is most easiest for the musician. Let them have fun with it. Because as always, that's what we're here for. And remember, you're not alone. So if you have questions about some of the equipment or anything else, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on the video. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Definitely hit that bell so you can get notified when all our next videos come up. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.